Welcome back to the channel. Today I am trying to figure out an issue or resolve an issue with my old boss's Jeep Liberty. So as you guys remember, I redid the top end, did the timing. It runs and drives perfectly. So I drove it home yesterday, no issues. But what's happening is he'll drive it. He lives really close to the junkyard. I think like one to two miles away and it ends up acting like it's starving for fuel. So what I, what I was thinking, because I cracked the bleeder screw on the fuel filter housing and it seemed like it had air in it. So I, a lot of people do this with Liberties. I had them put in an auxiliary flow through fuel pump and it didn't really change anything. But I drove it home yesterday and nothing happened. It ran great, it took it up all the way up to um, 100 miles an hour, no issues and it just, it just runs great. So I am working with a company called Topton. I'll put the link in the description for the scan tool. They sent me this scan tool. We're gonna try to figure this out and uh, just kind of go from there because it seems like a lot of Liberty people have this issue where they just live with it. They're like, yeah, we have the issue. It just happens every once in a while and we would live, live with it. This is a scan tool they sent me. It has a wireless, obd2 port which is really nice you don't have the cable so hopefully what i'm hoping what i'm hoping is going to happen is i'll have it plugged in it'll start doing it i'll be able to see what system is causing this um some people on the cummins forum since this has a cp3 injection pump say that um, the alternator causes interference which messes with the crane sensor i know it is a different system but maybe that is a possibility what i did was i auto scanned the obd2 port and it's just updating the uh i guess to find the vin number or something so or maybe it's updating the software for this vin number since uh, it's connected to my cell phone and it's wireless. So I'm scanning for a health report and we'll see what it comes up with. It looks like there's uh, eight things wrong with the power can, powertrain control module. Just finished, I'm gonna try the PCM to see what the eight issues are. And I don't know, I mean, maybe this will finally give us some light into what is going on with this thing. Um, let's see. Fault codes. We already knew the EGR control valve, fuel injector, three circuit open. Hmm. Crankshaft position sensor circuit. Leak detected, large leak. F fuel rail pressure too low, bank one. Well, I mean, technically all this is because it's not running maybe. Transmission control mill request. I wonder if all this is because it's not running. Crankshaft sensor, crankshaft position sensor intermittent. So I think this is mostly because it's not running. Um, so I could go back and see what the OBD functions are. failed oh man it's it better and better Woo. but it's working is weird obt2 is working hmm <laughs> Interesting. Okay. <laughs> Let's clear these. Yes. So, started right up. Sounds good. Let's see, read fault codes. So, everything else must have been related to the car, the engine being off, because the crank position and the fuel pressure, there isn't gonna be a pressure. So, obviously, 
Um, you know, the EGR circuit, we're not really worried about because it does work because I was able to control it before with the other scan tool. I probably can control it with this one, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go read the data stream. I'm gonna select all these, okay. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, let's see where it's ambient air temp. Let's see, what is it, 90. See, it's the ambient air temp right now, it is probably 60 degrees out. It's not 96 degrees. Um, let's see. Battery volts, where are we at? 13, so it's charging. Maybe the, I mean, it, the Cummins people or the Cummins forum said that alternators are an issue. It's charging. It shouldn't have lost that much. And it's the 13.7. So, I mean, nothing was on all night. The battery, maybe a ba it needs a battery and a alternator. Oh, let's go back. Oh, that's kind of cool. You can map it. The boost pressure being 12.24 PSI. That doesn't, it's, it's at idle. There's no way. Cam position sensor, zero RPM. Hmm. That's very interesting. That's weird. Zero RPM, cam position sensor. I wonder what this is. Standard range, zero RPM. That's weird. Coolant temp volts, coolant temperature. That is an actual nice temperature. So maybe that ground on the back of the head fixed something because it was reading like 300 something before. Here you can see fuel pressure set point. It's the the commanded and that's what it's getting. So 66, 000, or 6,600 when it's commanding 6,400. So it's making more fuel pressure than it needs, which is fine. So let's go drive this back to the junkyard. And if I experience the issue, I should be able to see if it's the fuel pump not being commanded or whatnot. All right, so just came up to a stop sign and it died. It pretty much just RPMs dropped off. I was coasting up and uh, yeah, so uh, oil light came on obviously because the engine wasn't running in the um, this ESP BAS. I'm not exactly sure what that means, but we're going to figure out what's wrong with it, hopefully. It's showing a crankshaft position sensor circuit. So maybe, Maybe I should try putting a crankshaft sensor in this thing. It has some weird thing going on with the crankshaft. Usually the RPM, when you crank it, shows the correct, but it has been, so when I spray it with ether, it goes up and it holds it there for like a minute and it's already like dead. See, so there's some interference going on with the, look at that. Something's up with the crankshaft position sensor. Um, it actually stopped letting me connect with the scan tool once it started doing this. Other thing I noticed is the battery is already dead and I haven't been cranking it that long. So I don't know. Also, another thing was when I was cranking it, I looked at the sync status and it showed out of sync and it wasn't pulsing the injectors, which that ca does happen with uh, bad crank sensors. So possibly a crank sensor, maybe an alternator and a battery. Jeep is now back at the shop, put a new battery in it because the old battery had a dead cell. And the RPM, I don't know what's going on with this scan tool, but it shows engine RPM and it shows this weird square wave signal or um, between two and three RPM, which if it was just a normal crank signal, it should just have like, you know, and then a missing tooth. But this one is kind of all over the place. So I'm not exactly sure what this is showing me. But uh, if it is showing me crank position sensor, uh, the crank position, maybe this is, no, even if it was cam position, it wouldn't be the correct deal. So she's running great now. Um, I think what was going on possibly was the battery was just too dead. So the battery was always charging or the alternator was always charging the battery. It is charging it now, but it seems like it was just, if, if it isn't the battery, but it did have a dead cell, so it needed a battery regardless, it could be the alternator. 
And if the alternator, I've heard in the, you know, I looked at the forums and, you know, posted a, um, a question about this whole issue with this Jeep. And they said that it could be the alternator, or no, it was in a Cummins forum. The alternator could be sending um, static or interference, which is causing the crank position not to know where it is. And we did have all that weird stuff going on with the, the RPM when it wasn't wanting to start after it showed me a crank position fault. So I'll have him test this out for a few days and uh, we'll kind of just go from there. Uh, I really, I'm really, you know, crank, Crank sensors aren't that expensive, but I'm really skeptical that it is a crank sensor. So I'm gonna end the video here. I'm really happy with a scan tool. I mean, it's great to have my own scan tool now. So if you guys are interested in this, it's top done. I'll have a link in the description and they are pretty pretty helpful. I mean, they have all the newer software, etc. So I'm gonna end the video here. If you like these videos, make sure to click the subscribe button, throw a thumbs up, throw a comment below. As always, see you guys next time.